everybody, John from Beaver Lodge HQ. How are you all doing out there today? In this video today, I want to teach you and show you a quick tutorial on using different inspectors within your web browsers so you can find classes and elements to help you style your site with different CSS. It's something I see pop up all the time. How can I do this? How can I do that? And most of the time, if they can find the class, it's easily solved. So here we go. Let me run through this for you. So at the moment, we'll use Beaver Lodge HQ, my site, to check. And we've got this open up in Chrome. Now, it's really simple. So for this basic tutorial, we're going to look at this heading here, making website development easy. And we're going to look at just see how we can style these different elements and target the classes. So all we need to do in Chrome is right click and hit inspect. Or you can control shift I. And that brings up the inspector here. Now if I go into Firefox with exactly the same window and I go into right click on it, it's then inspect element. If we go to uh, Explorer Edge, which is the new Internet Explorer, and we right click on that, we've got also inspect element. As you can see, they all look very similar. Now if we go over to Safari, you can see I've got this open. And if we right click on there, there is no inspect element in here. So let's just go this through quickly. So what we need to do is we go over to the settings. And what we want to do is enable the developer menu. So to do that, I'll try and remember how to do this. I don't normally use uh, Safari. So we go into, pref into preferences, drag that in for you. And if we go probably into advanced, we've got show developer menu. So now when we right click, we've got the inspect element. So that's how we enable this in um, Safari. Now I want to show you the next little step here, something else to know. I'm going to jump back to Chrome and once again inspect to bring up the inspect element. If you look here, you've got this select an element in the page to inspect it. If we click on that, and now when we hover over the different elements, you'll see down here it hovers over. We can jump to here and we can hover over each different element and we can see instantly the class that it's on there. So here, for example, this header, we've got the parent div. And if we go interior, we've got the inner container and then we can go, we've got the logo div and then we've got the logo image itself we've got the uh, we should be able to get the nav bar there it is and then we can get each different menu item so that's all through this little select an element here if we go over to uh, back to Firefox and inspect the element again you can see that same button here and the same features add you can see the size you can see the class here and it's also once again, down here, it jumps through to each different one. And you can pair it. Once again, you can target the parent and each different element interior and exterior. So it's really useful. And if we go into uh, back into Edge and we go Inspect, and we can go into here and we can see all the different, once again, all the different elements exactly the same way. And in Safari, if we go inspect and we look at the elements, there isn't one here. Now it might be something, as I said, I don't normally use Safari, so there might be an option to have it. Um, I can't see it here. So what you would probably need to do is go in here and click on if you highlight click on it inspect element it'll take you to you can scroll down through here or you can just highlight each element to jump straight to it and you can also search for elements uh, if you know you're looking for a particular div or element anyway uh, but that's safari i'm not going to do any more in safari because i don't use it i'm not an apple user uh, so you can play around with that but everything else i'm going to show you uh, it's still relevant even in Safari. Okay, let me jump back to Chrome, which is my browser of choice. So here we are, we're in Chrome. So we've got our element selector. So we can, 
to hit that, we can see we've got our H1 task here. And we can see here that it's got a color of white, which is absolutely correct. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see there's also a text shadow, but that's not in the same thing. Even though it's being applied to the same element, there actually you've got this part up here and you've got this part here in two different locations. The reason for that is, is because if you click here, you'll see this link here. That's showing, you, so this is being executed in the two dash layout dash CSS question mark blah 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 link. And if you click on that, that will open the actual CSS file that it's being called from, the actual source. So the, the CSS is being executed in here. Whereas if we go back to the element and we see this one, it's being it's being executed in a totally different CSS file. This one in, is being executed in a C index.css, which I can't actually see the code in there, so I don't know why that is. But anyway, it's on line one, so it's in the index file on line 199, and this one is on line one in the layout version question mark. So you can see that's in line one. Index is showing 199 lines, so I'm not sure 100% why, but we'll work that out in a second. Okay, so let's go back. So let's work out what color we want this to be. Or we can change the color here. If we click on that, we can open up a color picker and we can have a look at playing around with our different colors and find out what looks good. And let's make it that nice light blue. That little bit. Oh, we can target a color. I didn't mean to do that. There we go. So if you look, click. Now that we've got the uh, color chooser open. So if I wanted to make it the same color as that, I can hover over it and it will give me that color identifier. So that's done. We've now got that color. Easy, wasn't it? All right. Here's the thing, though. Even though that color is changed, if we refresh that page, it's still white that the reason being is because we are just playing around in Chrome we are not playing around in our actual style sheets that we opened up before so we're not changing this style sheet we have to go into our actual website into our page builder whatever you're using so to create your website would actually have to go and edit this style sheet if we keep scrolling down, you can see some of these things are crossed out. Now, there are a couple of different reasons for this. Now, let's start with this this one here, the box sizing. So you can see the box sizing border box isn't crossed out. WebKit dash board box dash sizing and mod dash box dash sizing. The reason for that is because the um, different browsers use different target elements. So if we give you this in over back over into um, Mozilla, I'm back in Firefox now, and we scroll down. So it's still showing that the Moz box is it's still called, now using the box sizing. If we were using an older version of Firefox, uh, that doesn't use the new standard of box dash sizing it wouldn't recognize that so it would then use the older version which is now deprecated if we go to edge and we'll and we go down here you can see the moz box sizing isn't actually crossed out it is actually being shown that it's being used whereas the webcat kit isn't okay so this one actually uses both. If we refresh that, I unticked it, so let's just refresh. Oh no, it's using the, there we go. Oh, it's using the Moz box. So it depends on your browser on which one that's being elemented. Let's jump back to Chrome. And if we scroll down a bit further, we can see here that we've got this font size 56 pixels being used because it's not crossed out and we've got this font size um, 36 pixels 
being crossed out and not being used. So we know that font size is 56 pixels. And if we click on the computed, we'll actually show you the computed. And you can see it's using the Quattrocento Sans font and the font size is 56 pixels. The reason for that is because of CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So basically it'll load in the blink of an eye, it'll go through and it'll read the CSS file from top to bottom. Just like we do in, in Western Civilizations reading books, it's top to bottom. So what happens is it'll load the 36 pixels and then it will come across another CSS, so font size is 56 pixels, and it will then load that one. So basically 56 pixels will override because it's being called last. However, if we wanted to, we, if we added the important tag, you will now see that the 56 pixels is being overridden because we've said, hey, CSS, this is important. We want this to load. So in certain times you can when you're changing your CSS and using the web browser to locate these classes, which you can see here, um, so span class heading text, um, sometimes we can't overwrite it because where our style where our style sheet is being loaded is above is being called before, so it'll call the top style sheets and run through them, and it'll call the next style sheet and run through them. So an example of that is if you had style.css loading in the header and then you had custom styles.css loading in the footer everything in the footer is being loaded after the header so the style sheets in there in the footer would essentially load afterwards saying that we don't generally put style sheets in the footer in fact we don't um, but another option is another example is when things are being loaded in the header the CSS is being called style sheet and you put what's called inline styling so if we look at this FF cold small you can see there's a style width 50% which is actually CSS and we scroll up you can see it there element dot style width 50% so we've also got this ID there being over, and that's been overridden so that one is being loaded by the CSS but this one is being loaded actually in what's called the DOM, the, the actual body of the document, um, the document object manager. So because the style sheet is loaded in the header, then it's loading all the body, of course, the body then will override. Always. We'll all, it just overrides the style sheets. So um, that's also why we don't put style sheets in the footer. Uh, so that's why things can be greyed out. Okay, so here's another example. So we've up here we've got the color white being loaded in the style sheet, but then in this skin we can see that our color for our heading for H1. So the this CSS you can see this is black. But H2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is grey. That's because this element is a H1. But all of these being loaded on that in exactly the same locations. That same line in style sheet. So it's the same way we are targeting it. So this one is saying, hey, all H1 classes, all H1 type headings, we want to be which this colour green, which you can see there, the colour picker shows you it's the green. But in this particular element, we are loading it in white. So we are, that style sheet up here is overriding the green, the general heading colors. So that's why. So you can see here another example where this is all black, but this is gray. Uh, because in this particular instance, it's L Builder Content Star. Uh, asterisk is everything after. So any class after FL build, FL Builder content is being loaded. So this is a direct child of FL Builder content. Um, you can, and then we've got before and after. So we're not targeting the before element. We're not targeting the after element. We're targeting the just the content element.
And here we've seen, you can see that this particular, if we go out to the heading, H1, you can see it's not being overridden because this gets loaded, then this gets loaded. So this CSS cascading, the last element red gets loaded, gets priority, then this one will be prioritized. Does that all make sense? I hope so. It's, it's um, something that is a very great tool to have in your resources. Now, quite often, I'm a developer, so quite often I will ask people, are there any errors in your console? So if we look in here and we go into the console, this shows you where there's any errors, which there aren't any errors. You'll see them when you know them because they'll be red, orange. This is just give, this is just basically a notice. If we go into the edge, you can see in this console that there are 41 errors and it shows you all the different errors that are being loaded. So in this case, 4043 errors, we got script errors, blah, blah, blah. And that's because Microsoft are different. So there's nothing wrong with the way the page is rendering, but we can see there are some errors. Debugger is for some PHP errors, and it's saying it could not locate CDN, blah, blah, blah. Crap. And if we go into the Chrome and we go into the inspector, you can see once again, there are no errors. And you can actually turn these off. So you can say, turn off any CSS errors, turn off any JS errors, blah, blah, blah. But what, there's no errors. And in Safari, we go into, into, so we turn on debugging and you can see that there's just a jQuery migrate, which is appearing in all of them. There's the console. So here's your errors and warnings and any logs. So quite often if people say, or you're talking to a developer and you're having issues, there's conflicts or something's not working, any errors in the console, that's where they're referring to. So um, it said, I didn't want to deal in Chrome, so it's under the console. You'll see any errors in there. So um, some of the other things you can see in here, you can uh, see all your different consoles, uh, in any sources. Uh, which you can see any of your um, sources for your actual um, CSS. So you can see here's my style.css for one of them. Right, so this is just my style.css for some that's being loaded somewhere. And if we go in, we can see if we close that, and let's open another one. We can, uh, oops, if we open another one, uh, let's have a look. So this is all the different style sheets that are being loaded as part, and jQueries and scripts and everything like that, that are being loaded. So we can see we've got the masonry being loaded. So through this, as a source on this page. But that is the basics of um, the inspector tool as you can see it has some really useful functions in really narrowing down your heading um, if you click on the plus sign here you can start adding in some different heading text but once again that didn't work so for some reason so now we know that to override that I'm going to have to add the, in, all import, the important tag because it's not working so but you can see how we can just utilize it to try and um, find all the different classes. So use the inspector tool, click on, to, just to recap, click on this little um, icon, find what you want to edit, click on it, click on the plus sign, and that'll give you the exact class you need to add to your style sheet to be able to change the, um, the style sheet for your website. So there we go. I hope this was uh, extremely helpful. Hit me up with any questions you have and I will see you in future videos. Thank you very much for watching.